go back like that. <laughs> Tell Holly it was important to be here, but I'm going to be on off camera, but I'm listening in and I hope you guys have an amazing meeting. Thank you so much, Kurt. We appreciate your willingness to always be here for your CRS family. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Hello, hello, hello. You know, first of all, I have to say I'm super excited that we are meeting on 12, 12 at 12 Eastern. When I really, when I was starting to post that out, I was like, oh my gosh, this is very amazing and so auspicious because this is the final, my final, actually, the final Mastermind Monday for 2022, as well as the final Mastermind Monday of 2022. Um, and one of the, as as you're, you know, wrapping up and rolling out, rolling down um, your ama amazing heart-filled presidency this year, Hollywood Word for the Residential Real Estate Council, I am so honored that you agreed to do this mastermind with us. Um, you are such a power of example to all of us, to everyone whose lives you've touched. Um, I remember getting a, a, a phone call from a new member going, oh, Holly Woodward called me, you know, and she just, you know, that you called every single new member and I've been around for a little while and I've not gotten those phone calls from members saying that every president did that. So I just want you to know how incredibly special that was for people. Um, uh, you know, and let me first introduce, I'm sorry, I'm going down a road of loving, loving on Holly. Hold on here. Um, thank you so much for joining us. This is Mastermind Monday, the New England region of the Residential Real Estate Council. Uh, we'll, this is, um, you know, we appreciate your time. We know it's very valuable and we know we're going to bring you some amazing value today with our very special guest, Holly Woodward. One of the many things that Hollywood were did this year during her presidency was to also um, create these really beautiful uh, major investor CRS pins. And we sent Holly a bunch of pictures from our Massachusetts uh, installation last week because you could not imagine the people that had that wore those pins. They had that pin on and it's kind of a lot of people that pin on and nothing else. You know, it was really amazing. Lots of folks who we don't often see at many of our things had that MI CRS pin on last week. And so it was just so um, affirming about the importance of being a CRS, about the importance of our CRS family, about the pride that people have in being a CRS designee and CRS member. So um, Holly agreed, as I just mentioned, to do our final um, Mastermind Monday. And of course, in Holly style did uh, is, is going to present and share with us now on team 22, which really was her theme and um, had an amazing kind of sports analogy and but really teamwork to everything that happened this year. Lessons learned from the locker room. We could not be more excited with all of that. I'm going to pass this over to Holly. Um, thank you to the leadership team for being on. As always, thank you, Christine McClellan, our CTO, who's recording all of this and broadcasting it everywhere. Marie, I see you, Rick. I've got a bunch of new folks. Uh, new leadership team, Kareen. Um, I know that Greg was on. Thank you, everybody who's joining us that's also joining the leadership team this next year. I'm going to unspotlight myself and turn it over to Holly. Well, good morning, everybody. And I too love um, dates, times, uh, relevance that way. So 12 12 at 12 Eastern time uh, is fantastic for me. And I as always, am honored anytime I have the opportunity to meet with teams, with leadership, with members across this country and around this globe. So thank you, Lisa, for reaching out to me. I know I've been on a mastermind in the past, and um, it means a lot to me. It really does to just be asked because that was the most important thing to me this year is to feel completely and totally accessible. I, I stopped as many of you know, I, I quit my broker job. I stepped away from benefits three months after my husband had had a heart attack and decided I was going all in because it wouldn't be possible to serve you the way that I wanted to serve our members who elected me 110% and also be able to do the same for the um, agents that were within my office. It just, it, it couldn't have worked out coming off of 
coming off of COVID and really truly needing to re-engage uh, with our membership. So, uh, you know, it seemed like a really great idea at the end of 2021 to do all that. And now as we get closer to 2022, there's a little bit of anxiety, I'm not gonna lie, you know, because now guess what I have to do? I have to put my money where my mouth was and I have to, uh, all the things that I've learned over the years through CRS and RRC in classes by top tier educators, guess what? That's what I'm having to do. And that's actually what helped me be able to uh, succeed this year, all of those things that I've learned and implemented. So it, it really, truly, so Lisa talking about the pins and I'll, I'll touch on that in a few minutes. Um, I actually have notes and I, I don't like to be scripted per se. That's just not who I am. I do know we have a 30 minute window. And one of the biggest things for me this year has wanted or wanting to be completely and totally respectful to every single one of you because there are so many things that you could be doing with your time right now. And time is the most priceless, priceless currency. It truly, it truly is. And so for y'all to be taking your time to spend time with me today and, and giving that means the world to me. And that's why I've done what I've done this year. So one of the things, like I say, when Lisa was talking about the pen, it was extremely important to me. And you bet we're proud to be CRSs, but we're even more proud to be invested in the future of this industry. And that's what these pens identify us uh, as identify us as, and that is invested and committed to not only professionalism and education in this industry, but we truly walk the walk and talk the talk. Makes me incredibly proud. So as Lisa said, um, you know, I actually didn't have what I would consider a theme, or I, I hadn't planned on it. A year ago in August, um, I went and met with Matt and Colleen after leadership training in Chicago. And I said, here's the deal. First member elected president in the history of council. This, my year is all about the members. That's all that matters. It's not about me, never has been. I look back at the timing on everything and had I been elected the first few times that I had applied that I didn't move through, I wouldn't have been able to travel. I would have been a Zoom president. Uh, I would have been stuck and, and that doesn't work for me. You know, I, I say Richard Waystack was the right president at the right time because he was able to adapt and, and respect the role. And I would have done the same, but I am, I am hands-on. Y'all know me, right? I'm touchy-feely. I'm kumbaya. I, I need to be around you. I, I need the energy. And the Zoom screen wasn't perfect for me. And then we had Alex who did a tremendous job, you know, the first basically 10 months of his presidency, he didn't have the opportunity to be out and about either. But then when we really did have that opportunity, he shined and so many of you have been able to see a different side of him and his personality. And I grew a relationship with him that I would have never imagined. And I'm so incredibly grateful for that. So Truthfully, I, I can't even imagine that we are nearing the end of 2022. I have had so many pinch me moments, good, bad, all of the above, right? Where I'm like, Father, hey, you put me here. Show me what I need to do or tell me what I need to do. And talking to the members, you know, and, and taking those calls and making those calls. Lisa, like you said, every single new CRS designee in 2022 has received a phone call from me. And that was something that was extremely important to me. Uh, and, and I have, too, received calls back. Most of the time, what I did realize is how many realtors don't actually answer their phone when it's a number that they don't recognize. And that's okay, because one of the coolest things for me is when I've been traveling um, around the globe, I've hung up and I've hung out. And so if my phone is off and I have a voicemail from a member or from somebody um, that means a lot to me, I get to play it over and over again. And I had one gentleman call me a couple of months ago and say, my wife and I walked in, she hit play on the voicemail and we couldn't believe that there was a voicemail from the president of the Residential Real Estate Council. I'm not tooting my own horn in any way, shape or form, but he said, we have listened to it five times. And I thought, I've got to call her back. I've never had that before. And I said, well, you've never had this type of family before. You really haven't because that is 
honestly and truly what this council is. We are a family. That's what designees are within this council. That's what members working on their designation are, truly family. So when Lisa reached out to me, this is why I need a script, sorry, or I need at least some notes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna reflect back on here so that we can stay on task and, and keep us within the time allotted. But Lisa said, you know, what is it that you want um, to title this? And I said, I'll tell you, I can't think of anything better than lessons from the locker room. And the reason for that is I started the year, and many of you that are on here may or may not know, but if you were a state president, you received your, or a member of the leadership team or board of directors, you got a team jersey to start the year because I recognize there is no possible way that one person or two people or 10 people could do what we needed to accomplish. Again, re-engagement, all that fun stuff. So the book that I sent out to the board of directors, and if you have a reading collection that you uh, put in place before you start every year and you haven't read it yet, the book that I sent out was The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek infinite game because we are not looking at a finite game here. We're not looking at the short term. We are looking at the long game for this council because again, as I said, we are invested. We are committed in the future of this industry and we are invested and committed in the professionalism and the education globally for our council. So I want to get through here to some of these notes and, and honestly, that's what I said. The beauty that I have found this year is there's not a single leader that I've come in contact with in person, over the phone. And we also did that at the beginning of the year. Matt, Colleen, and I got on phone calls with every single leadership team from across the states. And that was amazing. That's the silver lining um, in, in everything for RRC. The silver lining of the last couple of years of COVID was that ability to be able to do that. And the energy and the enthusiasm from the state teams was contagious and just reaffirmed exactly what I knew I needed to do uh, moving forward, being able to be the face of this amazing organization. So from our behind the scenes team in Chicago, and that is truly what they are, right? They they help us with our marketing, with our communication. They are, they are helping to um, get consumer outreach taken care of to help solidify and, and set us apart as the best of the best in this industry because that is truly what we are, the top 2%. So we, we had to have clear direction and trust. It was absolutely imperative. So like I said, you, you may or may not have known that we had the jerseys. We had actual clipboards and game plans for all of our state leaders to make sure that they had an idea of what we needed to accomplish. But bigger than that and more is we had to respect and adapt to what they wanted to do, to what y'all wanted to do, right? Because every single state and every single region is different, but we all have that commonality. And again, that's the professionalism and education in this industry. So, uh, like I say, the board and leadership team received a copy of the book, and I strongly suggest that you read it. Uh, Simon breaks it down into five components of the long game. I'm going to go over those. Just cause. If you don't know our mission statement for CRS, go on to CRS.com. That make, make that a goal today. We all understand that the state-required education for the 1.6 million members that are actual Realtors is not enough. That in and of itself is just cause for us to have this council and to keep it going in the future. Team trust. Maya Angelou, right? I have said it all year long. People may forget what you say, they may forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And I have truly felt from the inception, from my installation in November last year, you know, even, even through those 45, 50 days before I actually took office as president, I have felt the support and I have felt the, the warmth and the connection and the love from our amazing members. And it's, it's unreal. It's, it's been palpable. I truly hope that each of you have felt from me how much I appreciate and respect what you have done, what you will do, and the future um, is incredibly bright. So a team is all about the environment. If there's no trust, you'll have zero commitment. 
True leadership is a lifestyle, and character is at the heart. And character is what you do when nobody else is watching, right? That's who you are and what you do. And the character in this council is unbelievable. Every player has to feel valued and appreciated, and in turn, each player has to show up just as you will on the field. Everyone is entitled to a bad day, but what we don't do here at Council is unpack and stay there. We also have to have worthy rivals. We started out at the beginning of the year a lot, you know, brainstorming and everything and, and talking to state leaders and, and talking on the board and, and with the leadership team and knowing that there's always going to be someone that wants to try to dominate this field. We've got to be aware of that. We have got to respect them and we have to find opportunities to improve. And we're doing that at council. We respect and we adapt. I guarantee they're looking at us and I guarantee they're watching what we're doing. So we're doing the same. Existential flexibility is imperative. Failure to adapt for the future is the demise, whether it be in your business, whether it be in life, certainly if it's in council. We've got to consider profound strategic shifts to keep, our, keep ourselves at the forefront. We've got to be constantly looking at better technology, better strategy, and have the correct team on the field to, pay, uh, to uh, face those potential challenges. And I have no doubt that we do. We have the right CEO in place to help us with our top tier volunteer leaders. I'm so excited. I'm going to touch on that in a few minutes as well. And number five from Simon, courage to lead. Ethics right? We have to have an environment of trust, constantly preparing for our next leaders and planting seeds, consistently knowing that we may never enjoy the shade. In fact, we probably won't. We have to choose the right thing over the expedient thing. And I consider it a tremendous success when my phone rings, when I receive a text message, when I get an email from a member, a leader that's saying, hey, I don't like this. I'm not comfortable with this. Why are we doing things this way? Uh, because that means that you trust me as a leader in this council. And, and I can say that about so many state leaders where members are reaching out to them and then they'll pass on my phone number uh, to them. I am always readily available. And I mean that uh, during this year I have been and moving forward, there is no doubt if you need anything, if you have an idea, if you've got a challenge, we want to consider them challenges, come up with some solutions and call and, and let's figure this out and let's work together. We don't know what we don't know till we know. No different than me walking into this presidency. There is no one that could have prepared me for this year. Absolutely no one. And if they had told me what I could have expected, I'm, I might have run the other way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm, I'm just kidding, obviously, because we have made tremendous strides. But I think that's the very best thing is the not knowing, because that's how we grow. You got to be very, very, very comfortable being uncomfortable. And I learned that um, in a big way. That's why you see these giant earrings. Uh, these are my Spain um when I was in Spain with, with zero bags the entire trip that I was there until 9 p.m. the night before I had to leave the next day, this was something I bought. I ran into a store, had one hour between meetings and grabbed a few jackets and grabbed these earrings and I will forever, every time I see them sitting um, in my jewelry case, every time I pack them to go somewhere, every time I put them on, they remind me of how comfortable it is possible to be when you're uncomfortable, when you're surrounded by the right people. And that's pretty awesome. So things that I've realized this year, that's the top. You've got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And you guys, I, and I've said it everywhere I've been, like the truth of the matter is, and Peter, I don't know if Peter Weinert's on here, but one of the things we were talking about last week when I was at Triple Play is candid photos. Like, how instead of these staged photos where we're smiling and got our hands on our hips and and uh, the hair looks good, the lipstick's on, nothing on your teeth, nothing in your teeth, um, you know, nose is clean, all that fun stuff. Your your glasses aren't smudged. That's not the reality, right? That's that is the highlight reel when all those things are are lined up. But the the non-staged candid photos, there's actually one right now where I was dancing. We were at a YPN event at Triple Play, and I have the most 
bizarre look on my face. I can't even tell you what it was, but I can tell you this. I was in the moment and we were laughing and we were having a great time and um, letting loose. And so uh, you can feel sorry for me, be a little concerned for me, but just be aware that I wasn't in pain. I was actually having a really great time. And so as I've looked across the um, months, you know, that's what I said. I hung up and I I was hanging out. I would get on planes, and I've said this over and over again, I would get on a plane after a trip and I'd be so excited to look at my photos and then I'd realize I don't have any, or I have like seven. I've been somewhere for three days and I have like seven to 10 photos. What the heck, even traveling internationally. But what will never be replaced are the memories and the moments and the feelings that I had because yeah, I didn't have my phone out and I wasn't taking a bunch of pictures and I'm so incredibly grateful for those of you that did have some of those captures, good, bad, ugly, uh, this year. They were real. They were real and it was it's fun to look back on those and I'm so thankful. I also found out it doesn't matter how big your heart is or how how great you feel about something, you can still fumble and you can absolutely be wrong in how you handle a situation. I could not have hand selected a better group of volunteer leaders statewide, nationally. We have one of the strongest, well, we have the strongest board of directors that I have ever served on. I say that period. I I came in, there's been a couple of situations this year where it's like, you know, heart in the right place, you feel really good, but that's the coolest thing about the growth I've experienced this year. People keeping you in check. People going, hey, that may feel right to you, but hey, this is how it made me feel. And having those real honest conversations, and guess what? Doing it as adults not getting on social media, not bashing someone, not these passive aggressive posts where it's like, oh, I bet that's probably about me. You don't have to worry about that kind of thing when you're around the right people. And I can assure you, you are around the right people. But our board of directors meetings, I want to tell you this as members of this council, there were a couple of them that got a little bit heated, but never in a bad way. There was passion, there's energy, there's excitement. You know, nobody, nobody in volunteer leadership wants to feel like they have failed. No one. And typically, if you hear somebody talking negatively, it's because that's how they're feeling. They feel like they haven't accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. They, they haven't been able to do what they want to do. And so, you know, take that into consideration. And we also have to remember, and we've been saying it, my goodness, we've hit home on this the last couple of years. Everybody is going through something. Be kind. Leaders with the biggest smiles on their faces are oftentimes the ones going through the most. But they just don't want anybody to feel the same way that they're feeling in that moment. They wouldn't wish it on anyone. So make sure and be kind. Show grace. Be grateful, right? I said this at leadership training down in Orlando. I've said it multiple times over the year. You know, we've, we've heard attitude is everything. And attitude is everything. Well, actually, attitude can be good or bad. A grateful attitude is gratitude. And gratitude is truly, truly everything. So we also have to show grace in the race. There's 1.6 million members of NAR. That number increased drastically the last two years, and the next couple of years are going to differentiate and define the professionals, the true professionals. So will I see you on the sideline, or I'm going to see you at the goal line? I know where I'm going to see you. I know where I'm going to see you. I'm going to see you in the locker room because you're here Again, you're invested, you're committed, you're a part of a team, something bigger than you, and you're making a difference. So it's it's not an option. It is not an option. That's another thing we've learned the last couple of years. I don't care where you're at in age. I turned 50 in July. It is a privilege denied to many. We have lost some absolutely 
and credible members this last year. We have a lot of members that are fighting a very strong fight right now. Personally, professionally, Rich Bradford, I had the pleasure of stopping by. He sent me a message while I was in triple play and said, I understand you're in the area. I see you're here. Is there any way you can come by my house? I want to see you. And I said, Rich, you had triple bypass. You got home last week. I've been around a thousand people. He said, I don't care. I do not care. So I stopped by his house on my way to the airport, spent about 30 minutes with him. It was 30 minutes of some of the best just connection for him, but, but for me. And he said that. He said, I feel connected again. I feel re-energized again. This guy's got 36 staples down his chest. I'm going, Father, please. I'm praying on the way over there. And no matter what your religious beliefs are, you know, I, I, I was praying to make sure that I didn't have something that could possibly be a problem for him. And it was an amazing, again, 25, 30 minutes spent before a flight. If someone is on your heart, if you are thinking about someone, anyone, reach out. If you don't feel like you've got time to make the call, that's when you should make the call. If you're in a meeting and, and they're laid on your heart, shoot them a text. I'm not saying not to pay attention to what you're doing, but I'm saying if someone is on your heart, you reach out. When I was speaking in Orlando, the light in the room kept shining on one face. It just kept shining on one face. And I'll tell you over and over again, I, I you know, I'm desperate. I, I'm that girl that likes to see everybody's face in the room when we're, when we're speaking. I want to make sure that, that, um, what I'm saying matters. You know, I, I don't want to waste your time. And, and again, it, it was, seem, it seemed like that light just kept focusing on, on one person. And she is an amazing CRS member. She's been a leader that I've known for years. And little did I know, 24 hours later, she would receive the news that her husband had passed away suddenly. I kept wanting to reach out to her. And then the days, got, you know, the day got away and I didn't do it. Don't live with regrets, right? This life is entirely too short. Make those calls, send those texts, period. So again, your attitude, positive or negative, be grateful. So I am incredibly grateful for what we've accomplished in 2022. And this is just a small, small list of um, what we've done, but we've reconnected in person. I was in Florida, 87 people in a classroom. Uh, I mean, sorry, that was actually in, that was the Georgia convention in Nashville, but in Florida, 27 in person, 55 online. Um, the the event in uh, Mackinac Island, you know, 55 plus. They're, they're just numbers across the board of people really wanting to be belly to belly and engage and, and reconnect and we're doing that. Unified team. We truly had a unified team across this country and around the globe. Uh, and I'll touch on that as well. We've had a tremendous growth in membership. Was it the number I stuck out there? Heck no. But you know, and, and that's awesome. I knew that coming in. If that had happened, guys, wow, it would have been amazing. But what we did accomplish was amazing because the people that became members became members because they want to be a part of something bigger, and they are now. So whether that had been one member, 10,000, 100,000, doesn't matter. Our membership grew in a time where it didn't have to. Uh, Again, the calls to each CRS designee, and I actually sent personal personal videos to our global designees. So we have uh, a touch point in every country, and I would send a video to them, and they would pass it on to the members there, and then I would email and send a personal note to all of them as well. Our new CEO, Jeff Hornberger, so incredibly excited to have him on board. This man understands what we do for a living. Uh, he understands the importance of what we do and his vision and his the fact that every time I ever spoke to him in the past before I really even knew him, you know, 
he would say, CRS is the gold standard. CRS is the gold standard. When I traveled this year, people would say CRS is the gold standard. That was what our international um, bodies heard or knew of. And guess what? Looking back, they had heard that from our now CEO, Jeff Hornberger, when he was working for NAR and traveling the globe and they were asking about education in the industry and he was saying, you need to get your CRS. And now that man who believes in this council is our CEO. I'm incredibly proud of that. Our CRS RPAC major investor pins. You know, for the first time in council's history, our entire leadership team are RPAC major investor president circle members. That's pretty huge. And our entire board of directors are major investors. Our NAR outreach. NAR is reaching back out. They're asking us to participate. They sent me a message uh, four weeks before a trip to Romania and said, can you be there? Can you or uh, you or Pam or you and Pam be there? And we were like, you bet. So we headed to Romania. We have their ear. They pay attention. 650 of the major investor president circle members are CRS designees. That's more than one third of all investors in this country are CRSs. Real Estate Real Talk, our podcast, we have close to 7,000 downloads in 33 different companies. 33, or companies, countries, sorry, 33 different countries. How huge is that? Our certifications, we, we now have NAR certifications that have come out. You know, the last couple of years, we've learned a lot more. You know, unfortunately, divorce is a necessary uh, thing that we need to learn about. We've, we've touched on it a lot in the last however many years you've been involved, but we did. We, we saw the need for a certification and now we have it. Divorce, cryptocurrency, probate, our in-person classes filling back up. Our international impact, as I said, I've traveled four different countries this year. The United States, Spain, France, and Romania. And what I can tell you is in Spain and Romania, they don't even have to have a license to be a realtor. I could have walked out and sold real estate in either of those countries. That blows my mind, especially when I go to a conference there and I'm speaking and no one has to have a real estate license, but over a thousand people showed up in Spain and over 450 showed up in Romania just to hear about CRS and to hear about education in the industry and to set themselves apart professionally and education wise and so much more. Um, you'll be receiving if you haven't already an RRC membership privilege card with discounts to the top places that you use, places that you can get closing gifts from, but also Office Depot. If you need an office chair, if you need paper, if you need printer cartridges, those cards will be coming. They're RRC specific and you'll be receiving those. Um, again, so much more. Uh, it is my hope and prayer and it has been my privilege and it, it would honestly take days for me to be able to um, recount the events that have changed my life and changed um, who I am as a person over this last year. You know, uh, again, it has been an honor. It has been a privilege to be the face of this council. This team is ex exceptional every single person on the field, and that is every single RRC member, that is every single CRS designee, that is our state leadership teams who give back on such a tremendous uh, level. That is uh, a board of directors, like I say, that I could not have hand-selected a leadership team on, on that level as well. I pray that the momentum that we have built in 2022 has inspired you into 2023 and will make you dream more for 2024. And I, I say that, I, again, I thank you. I am grateful. I am honored uh, for this opportunity and for every single one of you who have made me feel supported and listened to and that I matter that you've believed in me more than I've even believed in myself. 
It's really easy for me to believe in each and every one of you, and I do. But for you to have believed in me and allowed me this role has forever changed my life, and I'm grateful. So I will I will close with that. I will tell you what, this, this clipboard has traveled uh, this world. I am beyond proud to wear this CRS president's pin. You're going to keep seeing me wear it, right? But this CRS major investor pin, when you see these gaudy giant earrings, you'll know it was from me not having any bags, from me wearing 40-hour-old pajama, or not pajama, yoga pants as I was cutting the ribbon to open a huge ceremony in Spain, right? Um, it's the things that build character. It's it's who we are. And when you're called for an opportunity to step up, I hope that you will because each and every one of you have a difference to make and each and every one of you have made a difference in my life. God bless you and thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much, Holly. You know, you you inspire us with your joy. You inspire us with your passion. You inspire us with the way that you really walk your talk. I'd like everyone to unmute right now and give Holly a rousing applause for this year because you deserve this more than anything. Yay. Yay. Thanks, you, Holly. <laughs> Great job, Holly. <laughs> We love you. Love you. Yeah, we do. We you have you have you have shown us what it's like to be a servant leader and to love. And you know, the 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 what you mentioned about respecting and adapting, you just embodied that in every way and you personalized that for all of us. Um, we can't wait to see you're not going anywhere. Immediate past president has a role, and I know that as we've seen Alex at everything. So that's a wonderful thing for all of us to know that you will still be in our hearts and lives. And I can say safely for everyone on this call and everyone that I know, we love you, Holly. We love you more. <laughs> I love you guys. I, I really and truly do. And I, I think, like you said, uh, Lisa, the fact that we have a role, an immediate past president role um, is, is so important. And the beauty is that we truly, as a leadership team and all of you, and I've, I've witnessed mm -hmm. this, setting ourselves up for the future. There's nobody, there's nobody going, look at me, look at me. I, I have not seen that in any of my travel. It's like, hey, let's help each other. Let's let's continue. Let's keep this thing going because it feels pretty dang amazing, right? And there is a place for everyone, everyone. So um, thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for making me feel like family. There hasn't been one single place that I've been the you know, I, I'm 23 pounds heavier at the end of this year because I have, <laughs> um, I have, I have broken bread. I have, I have enjoyed, I have experienced that between lobster rolls and um, veal, which made me sad in Spain, but that's another story. But anyway, like all the things, all the things, this council, you as members, we are truly, truly a family. And so let's let's grow this family moving forward. Um, more referral opportunities, you know, global. Um, and and stay tuned, right? Because that global aspect, we, we have more coming. Granada, the uh, Spanish celebration in Mocianate is in June, and it's June 29th and 30th in Granada, Spain. You'll see many of the Spaniards at Celebration in Atlanta, and I truly hope that you guys can attend uh, Celebration in Atlanta February 8th through the 10th. It's going to be amazing. You know, the energy, it's its contagious. And, and um, so to be able to be there, and what I love more than anything, and I've said this, it doesn't matter what company you're with. You're a CRS. You are the best of the best. You're an RRC member working towards your CRS or you're an RRC member, just setting yourself apart through certifications and, and working on uh, your education. But more important, you are a part of something bigger than you and you are making an impact in this industry. So thank you, thank you, thank you with that. I will let you go. My, my hope and prayers is that you have an amazing uh, holiday season, Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, and that we all have a blessed healthy, prosperous, and gratitude-filled 2023. So it's never goodbye. It's until then. Thank you. Thank you again, Holly, for wrapping us up this year. Thank you.
Thank you.